everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name's Eva and I'm here every Friday with new videos on all things Korea. If it's not your first time here, just subscribe and hit the bell so that you're notified every time there's a new video. I've recently changed job and as part of that I was required to give up my wonderful Windows laptop for a Mac. And while some people might be really excited about that, I was not excited about the prospect of not knowing what to do and just fumbling around with my laptop while also trying to get to grips with a new job. So I have rounded up all the major questions that I had and all the things that I didn't know how to do. So if you're also making the switch, then I hope that you find some of these tips helpful. I know they were definitely the head scratchers for me. And if you have already made the switch and you're a happy Mac user, then please watch this and give me more tips for what I'm still missing and how I could be using it better. Without further ado, here are my top 10 Mac frustrations and learnings. Dear Mac, you don't have a USB port? Look at all these lovely ports. Look at that HDMI, got USB, some port I don't know how to use. You only have this like one mini port on the side. Let me show you, let me show you. So apparently you're meant to connect everything through this like new, new thing, USB-C port. And I'm looking at, okay, there are two of them. And I'm looking at it going, how on earth am I gonna make my videos? Because I connect my phone via cable so that I can get my videos on here because cloud takes too long. Sorry. Oh, right, okay, so it's because you want me to have a seamless experience with my iPhone and you don't even need cables anymore. Well, guess what? I still need cables because I'm not spending over 700 quid on a phone. And I found, I think it was the iPhone SE model and I'd said, okay, I'm gonna spend like 600 pounds on this phone and I'd, I'd finally come to terms with that so that I could have a good experience, I could keep making these videos in the way that I was used to. And I get to the checkout page and they say, I'd forgotten about the headphones, so they don't have a regular headphone jack. And I'm sitting there going, right, I need AirPods. And the AirPods are 150 quid more. And they're designed to like self-destruct after two years. So sorry, I wasn't doing that. It was the first major, major problem. And it wasn't until I jumped on a call with a friend and he told me about this wonderful thing. So this is just an adapter and it has the USB-C port that that the Mac needs, and then it gives you all your wonderful USB, and thank you for all my cables. Yeah. I should do a cable dance. So you need one of these. They're not sponsoring me, but maybe they should be at this point. Um, but I'll leave a link down in the comments below. I've only used it for 10 days, so I can't really guarantee for how long it's going to work, but it's working fine for me, so definitely recommend one of these. And another side point for anyone who's not an iPhone user, if you're using an Android phone, you, it's not just as simple as drag and drop into the Mac. So you do need to download this thing called Android File Transfer, and then that lets you kind of copy and paste your files that are coming from your phone onto your Mac. So I'll link to that down below as well. Dear Mac, your webcam is sh Sorry, it really is. It, it's terrible, really awful, particularly because Macs are much more expensive than other comparable models that can do pretty much the same thing. So I don't know why you haven't upgraded your cameras in the last five years or something. But again, to, to continue making videos, that camera wasn't gonna be good enough. So I had to go out and buy an external webcam. Luckily, I found one that also includes a microphone. And again, it's working quite well. I've used it for 10 days. It's worked out okay. And I'll show you what that looks like, but just an external webcam that I can connect via USB port, <laughs> um, via my adapter straight into the Mac and then that just clips onto the top. So I'll leave a link to this down below as well if you wanted higher quality footage. This wonderful option, right click. The solution to all of your right click issues, you can still do all of the same things on a Mac. The only thing that you need to do is click with both fingers at the same time. So that is gonna do the same thing as a right click and bring up all of your alternative options. So just double, two finger click, two finger click. I think that's what they should. So two finger click, just a two finger click instead of right click and that'll give you all the options that you'd expect with right click. There will be no joyful dance break today. I shall be expressing my sorrow for losing my Windows laptop through interpretive dance. <laughs> I 
actually closing things down when you stop using them. Right hand corner, click on that X, and then that thing is closed. Really not that hard. We've got used to seeing it in the top right corner, but if you do hover over onto the left side, you'll normally see these three buttons. So minimize, expand, and then close down. So you probably think that clicking on exit is gonna exit this application completely. So I've just closed down my notes and I've closed down my podcast. But if you actually look at uh, the podcast, for example, which is what we just shut down, you can see this little black dot, which means that the application is still running in the background. And apparently, according to Mac users, this can make your laptop really slow. So you wanna make sure that you're completely quitting the different applications that you're not using. So how do you do that? Well, you can start by just right clicking on, oh, I realize I'm coming to the right click later on, but you can right click and quit. So just click on that button and that will quit completely. Or you can also hit uh, command and then tab, and that will bring up all of the different apps that you currently have open. And if you keep pressing tab, so hold down command, but then keep pressing tab to go on to the next one. And you can actually just press Q while you're holding down command. So if you click on pages, Q, that will give me the option to shut down pages, but of course it will give you the option to save any work before you do that. So I'll just click cancel there. So that's how you close down all of your files. You normally just go on this lovely big folder, File Explorer, you click on it and it'll bring up all the folders that you visit on a regular basis. I'd seen people come up with this dock here at the bottom, so I knew what to expect, but I wasn't sure, quite sure how to find it. And if you, just to bring up the dock, the first thing you do is really just scroll down. And I thought that for some weird reason, it wasn't working every time. You just need to scroll further. So it's literally as simple as that. So scroll down, it will bring up your dock. You can choose to just have it there all the time. So if you two finger click, double click on the dock, you can look at the dock preferences and they've got some of these here already. So you could just choose to turn hiding off, which will mean that your dock will always live there, but it takes up some space on your screen. So you might just choose to have that off. So I do have it hidden. So I just turn hiding on, which means that it pops down and disappears. So then to find your actual files, so go onto your dock and what will always be here is this finder. So it's this face and that replaces the explorer that we have. So if you just click on Finder, that will bring back, that will bring up everything that you have living in, probably in a slightly neat and tidier way. So you've got your desktop, you've got your downloads, and then you can organize all of your files accordingly. The next thing you'll want to find aside from your files are probably your applications. And the Mac has a handy shortcut and a tool called um, Spotlight, which helps you to find all of these. So the shortcut is just command and then space. So just command and then hit the space button and that brings up Spotlight Search. So you can search for any of the applications that you might be looking for and you can open it literally with just one, with just one click. The next thing I'm looking at is how I can just save all of my files. So normally if you're just working on an, a new doc, you probably just go to file and then save or save as and give it a title. You can choose where you want it to live super easy, super intuitive in my opinion, and it doesn't work that way. I'll go on to, it's not Microsoft Word, but the equivalent that's on pages here, just in the doc. So if I open up pages to so say I wanted to save my work, because it didn't live within this window, I didn't actually think that I could click file there, but file will actually allow you to just save um, as you would normally. But a faster way is probably to do that just in the title right here. So even if this is in full screen mode, if you just scroll up to the top, this will bring up the title. If you click on that arrow button, this will bring up um, where you should save it. Now, it will only bring up the most recent options. So if you want to find further options, then just make sure that you have clicked on other and that will bring up your finder as well. No one has time to press buttons down anymore these days. So I don't wanna, every time I wanna open a file, have to actually like click down. Do I really need that click just to select something? No, I just tap. I tap and then I double tap and then it's open like magic. So no extra effort wasted pushing down that button. Very tiring on my fingers. Now, I don't know why this option isn't just enabled by default. So you just go over to your trackpad, open up system preferences, which is the same as your control panel, your settings, and 
look for trackpad and if you just click on that and that hopefully will be the last time you need to press down to click uh, you can choose tap to click here which just allows you to tap with one finger just lightly so that was definitely a must do for me oh look it looks like all of this recording is causing my battery to run a little bit low but I like to live on the wild side, so I'm not going to go and get my charger now. No, I'm just going to hover over and then see, I've still got 51 minutes. That looks at least another Netflix episode before I need to go and charge my laptop. Useful, right? If you just click on the battery, you do have the show percentage button, which I love to be able to see. Now I know I have 46%. All my keyboard shortcuts probably save me hours every day. Control C and then down. Control V, Control V. Control V, Control V, Control V, like a ninja. Control V, Control V, Control V. There is a solution to be just as fast on your Mac, and that is just swapping anything you'd normally use Control for for the Command button. So I'm just going to flip that and show you here. So you've got your all your buttons here. So instead of Control C or Control V, just Command. Hold down Command and then press C. If you're one of those sick people that has 100 tabs open at the same time, please go and get help. So generally, I can see all of these down here and I can hover over and see what's going on there and know everything that I have open. But this may actually be, I can't believe I'm saying this, it may be one thing that Mac may do even slightly better than Windows does. So much. A really cool thing that you can do on a Mac is a three finger swipe up. So just swipe up with three fingers and look what happens it brings up everything in this view and just spreads it out. So it's almost like if I had a desk that I could just put all the papers so I could see them all at the same time. So I like this feature. This is the first thing that I like better on a Mac than a Windows laptop. So hopefully with working with it more, I will get used to it as well. But that's the last tip from me. I hope you've enjoyed this crash course. I definitely wish that I had all of these things listed when I started out so I wouldn't be stuck there in meetings just trying to, <laughs> trying to click stuff and get to the right place. So hopefully you found this helpful and please let me know any other tips that you have for a Mac and answer the question, do you prefer a Mac or a Windows laptop? Let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know down below in the comments. Give it a like and subscribe and hit the bell to make sure you get access to new videos. Thanks for watching.